Welcome readers. Today on Book Chat, joining me is my fantasy series co-host Casey. We'll be discussing Envy, written by J.R. Ward. Stay tuned. Hey guys, I'm so excited to share today's sponsor because you know I love a good mystery title. We even feature one right here on the podcast every single month. So I'm always on the hunt for the next read we can feature on the podcast. So when I had this opportunity to check out this website, I knew it was an absolute great find. And I also knew that I had to share it with you. Today's episode is sponsored by I Found This Great Book. It's a directory of black mystery authors featuring over 580 titles. If you're a fan of audiobooks like me, browse the 175 books in the directory that are available in audio format. Browse by author, style of mystery, including hard-boiled, cozy, supernatural, and more. Or even browse like in a bookstore and scroll through the books until you see cover art that jumps out at you. Visit the special link especially for Shelf Addiction listeners by visiting ifoundthisgreatbook.com forward slash shelf addiction. Support Shelf Addiction by supporting our sponsor. So head on over to ifoundthisgreatbook.com forward slash shelf addiction and peruse the directory of Black mystery authors. The link is also in the show notes. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Tamara Ford, and welcome to Book Chat here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast. Participate in this discussion by joining the Facebook group, Shelf Addiction Official. I hope to hear your thoughts on today's topic. You can always find me and Casey on Twitter and Instagram. The links for everything I've mentioned are below in the show notes. If you enjoyed today's episode, please support this podcast by sharing it with some book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. That would really help me out, and I appreciate you for doing so. The uncut video version of this podcast podcast is available now on Patreon. Join us there for exclusive videos, including after shows and more. So if you're interested in that at all, you'll need to come on over to Patreon and sign up. Without further ado, let's get started. Welcome back to another fantasy series read along discussion. Today, we are talking about the third book in the Fallen Angel series, Envy. Yay! And for this fun discussion, joining me as always is my fantasy series read along co host, Casey from Heart Full of Ink. Welcome back, Casey. Hello, hello. I'm so excited to be here. Yay! I'm glad That's you're always. here. Yes, it's always a good time. It's always it a good is. time. It is. It really is. I love it. Um, so let me give you the stats on Envy if you guys are not familiar. So you know what's going on. Yes. Envy was first published on September 1st, 2011 by Signet. And the audiobook was published by Brilliance Audio. The audiobook is narrated by Eric G. Dove. And it has an unabridged runtime of 14 hours and one minute. The mass market paperback is 454 pages. So another chunker from J.R. Ward. As expected. So, uh, <laughs> Casey, would you hit us with the synopsis, please? Absolutely. A man and a woman tread the lines of desire, of danger, desire, and deliverance in this novel of the fallen angels from the number one New York Times bestselling author of the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. As the son of a serial killer, homicide detective Thomas Veck DeVelchio Jr. grew up in the shadow of evil. Now on the knife edge between civic duty and blind retribution, he atones for the sins of his father while fighting his inner demons. Assigned to monitor Vec is internal affairs officer Sophia Riley, whose interest in him is both professional and arousingly personal. As Vec and Sophia have an and Vec and Sophia have another link, Jim Heron, a mysterious stranger with too many answers to questions that are deadly. When Vec and Sophia are drawn into the ultimate battle between good and evil, their fallen angel savior is the only thing that stands between them and eternal damnation. Dun, dun, dun. Da, da. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so installment three. Yes. Are you still enjoying it? Yes, I am. I Yay. really, really <laughs> loved this book. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the further we get along, the more I believe the love interest for me. Yes. Yes. This one was definitely more believable than the last one. 
Absolutely. I still stand by the fact that our last couple from book two are getting divorced in like the next 10 to 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> like they're not lasting. But Sophia and Vic, yeah. Yeah, they're they're in it for the long haul. They're together forever. Oh, yeah. Really I love weird. it. Like they both call each other by their last names and don't know how to cook. <laughs> they're awesome. <laughs> yes. Perfect match. And what what else is like the best that he's kind of a little bit scared of her daddy? That is going to keep him in line. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. Yes. Her parents were the best, by the way. Like, yes. Her parents were the best. But yeah, no, they, they were the perfect match. I truly believed that, yeah, they're in it for the long haul together. They're one and done. And... I believe, even though it was a really fast love story for the two of them, like they hopped into bed real fast or popped onto the couch, I guess, real fast. <laughs> right. Like, it was still believable. It still mm-hmm. felt authentic and yeah, believable. Yeah, totally. Um, I have no complaints about their love story. It was super cute. Uh-huh. And I, yes, and I liked Vec too i Mm -hmm. actually liked him as a character and i felt Mm -hmm. bad for him i'm like damn your daddy's a serial killer that's the worst Mm -hmm. that's the worst dot com opening scene like (laughs) with him standing over the dead body and his first line of dialogue was tell me did i do this like did i kill you i was like damn yeah like what what the fuck (laughs) yeah that description of blood was just oh my god I I need to send that to all of my clients just to be like, this is how you describe things. This is what I mean when I say I want descriptions because it was, it was on point. J.R. Ward knows how to fucking write anything. Like she She does. Amazing. That was a gory scene and you could tell. You could feel it. It was so emotional and scary. And the fact that Vec didn't know what the fuck happened. Like, Like, did I do this? Did I hurt you? And that, yeah. Oh, yes, loved. Fact. And then he calls nine one one. He calls the police. Mm-hmm. He's like, I think I might have did this. So, <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, uh, okay, Officer uh, Devecchio, how about you just stand over here? <laughs> yeah, let's, let's let's check you out. Check you out let's make sure there's nothing on yeah. your hands. Which I was like, shouldn't there be some on his hands if he was touching the guy's wounds with his jacket? But I, I'll let that pass, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's he's totally innocent. He's totally not the one. No. He 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 felt it so deep inside. He's like, I, I killed this man. Well, and later but, we find out, I mean, we knew kind of in the beginning, but it was like restated later when he takes a polygraph he intended to kill that guy he wanted mm-hmm. to kill that guy he wanted to mm-hmm. but didn't right a vampire did yes i'm like oh vampires she crossed them that already i'm like vampires mm. i okay so i was hoping that it was butch because i de la cruz his detective partner was the cop from Dark Lover. Yeah. You know so, what? Yeah. <laughs> so there was a crossover there. Mm-hmm. He worked with Butch. He knew Butch. Like they had that working relationship. And I was like, was it Butch? Was it Butch? Was it Butch? And I was just waiting for Butch to pop out of the forest. And he didn't come out of the forest. And I was no. like, what is happening? Where is my yeah. Butch? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, I was waiting for that explanation, but it never came. That, I guess, would be my one disappointment with this book is that Bush didn't come out. Oh, well, you know, in this world, you know, well, I guess the same in uh, the other world, um, the Mm -hmm. humans don't really know about vampires. So, unless, you know, the angels decided to out them to, you you know, Vac or somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Now they'll they'll keep believing that it's. Uh, they're like it's the animal attack or, <laughs> yeah. wolf or something i mean honestly this guy is tore up and it looked like mm-hmm. you know gashes in him and they look at him they're like 
There's nothing on you, really. I don't know why you think you did this. Your blade like, is clean. Like, it right. hasn't been bleached in the last 10 minutes. Right. So, but that was great. I loved it. It did start off with a bam. And then, you know, in, a, in with a bang, I guess. And then, you know, when Sophia came on the scene, she was like, I liked her personality. Like, she didn't mm-hmm. feel like over the top at all. <laughs> she was mm-hmm. just a, a internal affairs officer, like doing her job, like investigating. And yeah. you know what? Like human women do, you're like, damn, he kind of cute, but damn, did he kill somebody? He, <laughs> cute, he kill somebody? Oh my God. <laughs> she definitely went in thinking he was more guilty than not. Then she yeah. did her job. <laughs> And she did it thoroughly. And she's like, no, I don't think he did it. And here's all the evidence to prove that he didn't do it. Yeah. And yeah, then no. when you think she's on the same page with him, mm-hmm. one person drops a little nugget in her ear. And then all of the, you know, belief in him pretty just much fled out of the way. Gone, just gone. Yeah. And she's like, Oh no, he tricked me. <laughs> he did it. I'm like, girl. That was a on. little much. That was a little like, come on, trust mm-hmm. your man a little more than that. Like, mm-hmm. like she gave him no benefit of the doubt at all. None. Not a single one. Which kind of sucks, but you know, he forgave her in the end. He and, did. I wouldn't yeah. have. Because I'm that bitter bitch that would be like, you thought I fucking killed somebody and you hung like basically you told me don't don't bother me ever again in life. Yeah, so, like one nugget <laughs> of doubt and I'm out to dry was to say, right. you know, something doesn't happen later. Is it going to be are you going to hold my dad over my head for the rest of my life? Right. And, and then I guess like that showdown kind of proves that he's not a killer. Exactly. I, guess. I don't know. And like then the one, old, but. the one thing she wants to also top the cake with the cherry is oh, he started smoking again. He lied. He's smoking. I'm like, girl. No. Oh my god, that lie! <laughs> like he just agreed to stop smoking, and now he's being interrogated. Yes, the man is gonna get a cigarette. <laughs> Yes, like it was 12 <laughs> hours. He quit for 12 hours and then you <laughs> him. He's going to go back to one of his vices. She it's like, he so lied cool. to me about smoking. I'm like, girl. <laughs> no, no, just, just sit your ass down. Go back to therapy. Learn how to trust people. Uh, yeah. Like, it was crazy. I'm like that one piece. I'm like, really? Are we really going here about these cigarettes? Is that the most serious concern? <laughs> or it was in the moment, but like, yeah, good God. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh my gosh. And like, despite everything, like he managed to forgive her for that, you know, and they end up together with a happily, happily ever after. Ever after. <laughs> uh <sighs> But it was a road because, you know, the war is going on during all of this. Mm -hmm. And he is the soul in this book that he's, you know, they're fighting over. Mm -hmm. And Davina, again, she always has the one up. She's always got her claws into these people before, you know, they're even able to come to the battleground about it. Mm -hmm. So she always has a one up. She was in Vec from basically birth. So yeah. decades before Jim Heron ever appeared on the scene, Davina was already like, yep, I got this. I'm I'm going to win this round. And thankfully she didn't. I mean, how does a grown man walk around for decades with a double shadow and not realize it? Have you ever looked at your shadow? Because I realized reading this I book. have. I have, but not like on purpose, let me see my shadow, (laughs) but like every once in a while, you know, you come to your car, you know, you just happen to have things, you look and you can see your shadow. So I'm like, how do you, I don't know. (laughs) Magic, wave it away. He never looks down. He's too busy to the world. But he knows something wrong. He covering mirrors in his house. He like, (laughs) (laughs) he knows something's wrong. 
like, why are you covering mirrors? What do you think is in there? What's happening? Your other shadow is there. (laughs) I don't know. It's kind of like, okay. But yeah, I mean, I still... Even with those little quirks, I still mm-hmm. like Vec. I'm still like, okay, I oh, believe yeah. it. He's got enough drama going on with his daddy. He's probably thinking, you know, he doesn't want to be like him. So he's constantly mm-hmm. fighting this urge or maybe not even an urge, but a fear that he could be like him. So uh-huh. maybe that's what he thinks he sees. I don't know. but Yeah, I think it was kind of that kind of... There were a couple scenes where... He heard voices and it was mm-hmm. definitely like Davina's voice kind of coming out of the shadows, so to speak. And he'd freak out a little bit and then, you know, like cover the mirrors, stay away from everything and just be like, yeah, I know I heard something, but I don't know. Don't oh, like that, that one scene when he got in the shower? Yes. And- <laughs> it was so <laughs> creepy. And he's like feeling stuff like on him. Like he uh-huh. feels, I'm like, ah, he's a bloody <laughs> murder. <laughs> like, oh my God. I'm like, oh shit. I think the house was haunted and run the fuck out of there. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, no. She's you doing feel stuff something, to him. You hear something. You yeah. Mean. Yeah. And she's like and also, messing with his mind. Can I just add really quickly? He puts, stuff over mirrors but he doesn't know how to hang up curtains or blinds or anything and he just walks out of his house naked and anybody looking in his window can just see him walking around naked and i'm like damn son Uh, look Ah, and sophia's sitting outside in the car (laughs) and she like dang (laughs) she like is this real oh my gosh she's like look at that body wow (laughs) i mean i probably wouldn't look away either if i was sitting there i would look through the window (laughs) if i was his neighbor i would have a chair by my window and just watch but i'd be a creep (laughs) i would be a creep I mean, because according to, you know, J.R. Ward's description, he had his stuff together all the way together. Mm -hmm. (laughs) No person would look away if you are a gay male or a straight female or whatever, bi female, you are going to be looking at him because his yes he had no problem getting women as well, which it was clear, you know, he... Mm-hmm. Although he had problems with, you know, groupies, groupies and stuff. Trying- and people who are obsessed with his dad. And one woman yeah. had of his dad's face on her. And I was like, yeah, that would scar me. That would be really, really creepy. Oh, yeah. But he had no problems. And then it was like later to figure out that one um, uh, police officer with air quotes was actually Davina like coming to like flirt with him every day or like you know giving him a coffee that one girl or woman was Davina Brittany well no Brittany. no 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 Brittany was real Davina just copied her yeah at, uh, when she went after the mashed potato man which I'm sorry but that is like the best description I love J.R. Ward for making a white man say I look like mashed potatoes. Like I just I love her for that. And and he did look like mashed potatoes. Apparently he uh-huh. looked like shit. And then Davina was like, Oh, I actually did a good deed because you know, she's like get, she gave giving him this guy. Yes, like here, let's just, you know, act like you're worth something and act like people love you and you're fine. <laughs> go go off, sir, and have some sex. Good luck. <laughs> Basically. She's like, Look, I I did something nice. <laughs> Which was surprising. Davina did something nice. Yeah. To be so proud. (laughs) Oh my God, right? I'm sad we didn't get to see her in therapy, but I'm really glad she kept talking about her therapist and how she's working with her therapist and her therapist was giving her good advice for letting things go. Oh my God. That she twisted into her own demented demon ways. But yeah. Yes. The demons in therapy. I think Vex should go to therapy too. Yes, I I agree. He needs it. Um, 
And I definitely was glad that um, speaking of Davina, that we didn't get another scene underneath underground Mm -hmm. in hell. Yes. Because I feel like after we got that dose last book, thank you for giving us a break from that. This book. (laughs) Yeah. Did not want, did not just, nope. It was, it was bad enough that Jim went down there willingly and made that deal with her to get uh, Vex's name. But it was still yeah. just like, oh, God, this is this is rough. I know. And then I'm like, well, she told the truth. And she kept telling him, I didn't lie. Where's my prize? And mm-hmm. he like, bitch, I'm never going to fuck you. <laughs> I was just bullshit. I, I, I lied this time. I lied. And she like, like, how dare you lie to me? <laughs> Like, whatever. <laughs> he has such a good time, like, sticking it to her. Like, you know, uh, uh, yes. that's a knife. <laughs> he hates her. Like, and I don't he blame him. He hates her so much, which is good. Like, yeah. everybody should hate her. But yeah. I really appreciated the fact that this this is Envy, you know, off the Seven Deadly Sins. But the envy wasn't Vec, and it wasn't about Vec. It was about Davina. Davina, yes. Dealing with her envy of the love and the romance and the relationships that everybody else is getting. And she's alone with all of her stuff. And even, like, Jim noticed that. He's like, oh, you wish that was you? You thought we was like, you know... (laughs) He like and he they love calling her bitch, bitch. <laughs> never. <laughs> like, never. Yeah, never. Like you can just hold on to that hope forever because yeah, that's not gonna be you and me anytime, ever. Never so ever. don't even like, let it go. <laughs> not a son. It's it's done. You're, you're dead. Oh my god. We have two yeah. souls to your one. We're we're winning. Like Right. Yeah. And that's what it is. This whole book, she said it like distinctly two mm-hmm. different times that she felt envious about the relationship mm-hmm. that Sophia and Vec had or like something he yeah. would do, say to her or, you know, he she was very jealous mm-hmm. and wanted it for herself mm-hmm. and Jim. Like, <laughs> I don't know why she she is obsessed with Jim because she could not break him. And yeah. that's why she is. Obsessed he has a really him. good dick. Like she's yeah. obsessed with the dick. But yeah, she couldn't break him. And he's kind of like Beck. He's bordering that good bad line. Like he's kind of yin and yang. He did a lot of bad shit, but he's also really good. And you know, he's the savior. He's basically Jesus Christ, as they kept implying during this book over and over again. Um, mm-hmm. Like she's has a little bit of good in her too. Like we saw with mashed potato man. <laughs> like She yeah. is attracted to that because nobody's fully evil or good. And yeah, she wants the good in him to come into her too. Yeah. I think she does literally, <laughs> literally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she would consume him if she could, if she could suck him into her body, like permanently, <laughs> she would do it. <laughs> The way he went into Vec at the end and they were like yeah. all one thing. Yeah, she she wants that. But and I mean she- Ward also never ceases to forget to remind us what Davina really looks like. Because we get these passages where like her look will slip, you be like, Oh, that mm-hmm. bitch ugly. <laughs> She's this scary. demonic monster <laughs> with scales and claws and wings. Yeah. And then she's like, no, I want to be a pretty woman with yeah. big boobs and a big ass. Right. And she lets this slide right over her <laughs> like a glove and she looks like something mm-hmm. new. But when she gets too upset or too outraged, too, too, you know, it's like it can just Emotional. fall away. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, man. That is a nightmare. <laughs> she is a is. nightmare. And um, I love that, like, that's not lost. Like, she is evil with a capital mm-hmm. E. And she stays that way. And, like, yes, yeah, she did one nice thing for some random dude that helped her out. But that doesn't mm-hmm. negate the fact that she is bad. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't yeah. negate anything. And, yeah, no, she's very much... She's a diverse character in the sense that, 
you know, she does something good, but she also does something bad. And then she goes to therapy and her therapist talks her through an issue that a normal person would have. But then Davina twists it around and it's like, I can't let go of this earring because it was somebody who I murdered. And I want to keep that momentum because I'm a serial killer. But my therapist said, you know, it's okay to let go of possession. So let me let go. Like, it, it's so humanizing while still being demonic. Fuck up. Yeah, that whole scene. Beautiful at it. Yeah. God, it was that whole scene, you guys. So she's trying to plant evidence um, in the mm-hmm. police, you know, little thing. That's how she she helped the police officer that looked like mashed potatoes that let her <laughs> in. Under a guise of someone else. She was wearing someone else's body, basically. Um, And so while she's in there, she was playing this tug of war with herself to let go of the earring that she wanted to plant. And she's like, I don't have a lot of time left. This dude's going to be back. I got to talk myself through it to let it go. I'm like, girl. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it was fun. It was wild. It it humanized her, but also, you know showed how evil she was because it oh, was yeah. sissy's earring and yeah. sissy is the virgin that jim heron has kind of like made his and i'm using air quotes because he like didn't meet her until after she was butchered by <laughs> davina and now he's like i have to save this virgin girl's soul and set her free from hell and he had this whole thing in this book about she's my girl she's my sissy I she's know. mine but also like and i feel like that's borderline kind of getting a little bit weird like Jim, bit. i i understand you wanting to rescue this virginal girl who looks so pitiful you know what mm-hmm. i mean i get it but even like that's where he ran into problems with like eddie and adrian they like dude get a fucking grip this one <laughs> chick who is already dead, dead. you can't yes. do anything about her we need to win mm-hmm. the war and then she will be let go it's like focus Instead of, Mm -hmm. like, flailing all over the place, which he, like, you know, somehow Sissy's story got entangled in this other story. Mm -hmm. And the two really had nothing to do with each other, but because they wanted to, like... um, Make it happen. Right. Um, Davina was managing the evidence for Sissy, the different serial killer, back in Sophia, where the cops were like, let me search into this missing woman case. Yes. Jim's growing up like I have to talk to her mother I have to swear to her mother that everything's gonna be fine yeah and like yeah it shouldn't have been together but and if and, I remember and- correctly didn't she plant that because she thought that would flush Jim out because he had some kind of thing mm-hmm. going where she couldn't track him mm-hmm. and she's like where did he go and so she's yes. like well if I do this I know this will bring him back out because he is desperate to help Sissy he is desperate to find out about this yes so Jim is a lot more powerful than anybody is realizing even yeah. Jim and Nigel and the angels upstairs and angels downstairs and everyone like he just said okay I'm gonna go be on my own and disappear and then he like literally disappeared nobody could find him Mm -hmm. which was why Davina is like oh my god my boyfriend is gone I have to find him (laughs) let me let me dangle this version out here and see if it runs running that's exactly it like where's my man yeah she's like I can't feel him I can't find him I need him what a mess. Him running. <laughs> he, he did it. He, he played to the fiddle or whatever the phrase she is. She knows how to yank his chain, that's for sure. Yes. Um, even though I think he's starting to slowly figure out, like, you know, with him lying to her and kind of mm-hmm. like laughing in her face. Like, I feel like he's starting to figure out, like, her game, like the bigger game. Mm-hmm. Uh which is good, but Sissy is still a big kink in his armor and Mm -hmm. could really cause big problems for him. So do you think the Sissy situation has died down or do you think it's going to keep going through the rest of the series? Oh yeah. Hell we're not done. We're not done because Mm -hmm. so like, yeah, they found her body, but Mm -hmm. as far as Jim's concerned, he wants her out that wall. He wants her yes. from down there. 
And I think he came to see Sissy's mother to kind of like assure her that he had her back, like Sissy's back and will protect her. So it's definitely not done. See, there was this moment where they're in the house and Jim was like drawn to a photo of Sissy because of course he was, but she was looking all serious and fierce and whatever. And uh, her mom came up and she's like, yeah, we took that picture because she played like field hockey or something. I forget the game, but she's like, yeah, no, she was always there for her teammates and she was super fierce and better than anybody gave her credit for. And I was like, oh shit, (laughs) is her soul going to come out and like, come out swinging and start fighting to Vina. I mean, I don't like, I'm trying to remember what happened with her. I feel like there might be something, but I don't really remember the details. They're lost. Like I read this so long ago, but I feel like we're not done with Sissy. I feel like she's going to do something in some kind of way. Um, kind of like she came out and kind of helped Jim in that moment when he was down there. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, mm, I don't know. I wish Jim had like something else. And I mean, I understand he needs something to rage about when it comes to mm-hmm. Davina. And that is that thing is sissy. You know, she is the thing. Yeah. But it's like my sissy, my da da da. I'm like, you've yeah. really like gotten really intense about this. Like that's your woman or something. <laughs> it's not. He did call himself at one point. He's like, oh shit, I'm calling her mine as if she's actually my woman. But that's not how yeah. I want her. Because again, right. there's a huge age gap between them. Mm-hmm. Like he could be her father if he had a kid when he was a teenager. Yes. So like, that's why I'm like, it's kind of borderline creepy, but it's like, I think he bit. realizes it, but it's like, he doesn't really know how to turn it off. Like he doesn't, he doesn't, but I don't Yeah. like, as long as it doesn't go down that creepy road, eventually I'll be okay with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I got to talk about my homeboys, <laughs> Eddie and Adrian. <laughs> yes. Oh God. Okay. Wait, before we do that, let's take a quick break, you guys, yeah. because yes. Uh, we need a break to get my thoughts <laughs> together for them. Need a moment. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're going to take a break. You guys will hear some commercials from our sponsors. Definitely check out um, the books I have on Amazon. I actually ordered my own planner that I made us on Amazon right now. I have an undated planner. It's gorgeous. You guys, I'm going to be posting it on uh, my Instagram. It's gorgeous. I love it. I can't wait to start writing in it. So between the book review journal, the challenge journal, and now undated planner, there are lots of things available to you. And you know, the nerd that I am, I hope you guys like them. Um, So yeah, we'll be right back and uh, stay with us. Today's episode is brought to you by the Shelf Addiction Merch Store. Check out all the bookish t-shirts, notebooks, mugs, and more. Don't miss out on these original designs, perfect for any book nerd. Support the podcast and visit shelfaddiction.com forward slash merch and pick up your next favorite bookish item. All right, we're back, guys. I want to jump right back into Eddie and Adrian. Okay, look, y'all. Those two, I love them. They are best of best friends. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the book, it was pointed out later on by Nigel that Adrian has never been known to sleep with men. Okay. It was Mm -hmm. pointed out by Nigel. I don't think he rolls that way because he was very jealous when he thought his man might have been with Adrian. So the scene where (laughs) Eddie and Adrian are doing it up in the bathroom with a girl. I'm like, hmm, hmm. There are some actions there between the two of them that you- They're in love. They're in love. <laughs> they got, he's like, oh, I know how to get him off. I'll help him out. I'm like, WTF? Like, what is happening? <laughs> What's happening? He's like, Eddie can have sex with other people, but you can't. <laughs> For when he has sex with me so let me go give him that safety oh. and help them both have all of these orgasms well i can't even get my dick too depressed girl i'm like what is that what is happening because i'm like i thought you were straight adrian you're not <laughs> bye 
bi. He, he's bi. He's or, or he's love. gay for him. He's got the gay <laughs> for him thing going. I don't know. Um, but that that whole scene, I'm like, my eyes are bugging out. I'm like, what the hell's <laughs> happening? <laughs> Now, before, I thought it was strange that, you know, they would be so into sex with the same girl before, you know, I'm like, well, they doing a little mm-hmm. touchy stuff, but this just got leveled up a lot. <laughs> like, damn. The swords are not touching, but, you know, touching. <laughs> right. Thing. I'm like, okay, that's how we're rolling. Got it. Noted. Check the box. <laughs> I'm like, Okay. So after that, I'm like, oh, how sad. Like, okay, so we get the best friends for life, we know, but then something horrible happens. And it's shocking that, you know, Eddie is taken out by a human. Mm -hmm. Who's possessed by Davina. Who's possessed. But he just gets, like, gutted by this random ass, high ass human who is, like, on drugs and possessed. Yeah. And he just goes out. He just he's down for the count. He's dead. Like, damn. He's dead. Ugh. I he's dead. The- I cried. I couldn't. I was so upset. I felt bad. I'm like, dang. Really? That's what we're doing? And Adrian, he about lost his mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He lost the love of his life. Even their best friends, partial lovers, whatever. Like, it was yeah. the two of them for centuries i think they've been together like four centuries or something yeah i think we learned that in the last book but yeah no they've mm-hmm. been together for centuries the two of them and yeah no adrian was just fucking devastated and he's oh like, yeah been me i was the one who was supposed to die you know like it was oh yeah i'm so heartbroken for him yeah, I felt horrible. And I'm like, what's going to happen? And even like Nigel and them, they were like, oh, no. Like, you know, Eddie balanced Adrian. Like, Adrian's the mm-hmm. loose cannon. And Eddie was like the stabilizer. What's going to happen when the stabilizer is gone? Nothing good. Nothing good. Yeah. Adrian did calm down a bit. And he went to that, like, numb, calm, icy void of his. But that shit's not going to last. He's Mm -mm. going to go after Davina really hard, really Mm -hmm. fast. And it's, uh, I don't want Adrian to die either. I don't want him to die. I feel like it's really not fair that Eddie died. Um, Mm -mm. Yeah, that wasn't fair at all. And again, Davina is running amok, breaking rules, doing what she wants. And it's like, Mm -hmm. no one is checking her. No one is checking her. Um, but somehow Adrian was able to pull his shit together for the this round, mm-hmm. and um, what was his name? Not Nigel, but what's Nigel's boyfriend's Colin. name? Colin. Yes, Colin. He mm-hmm. has had enough. He's like, this is some bullshit. Mm-hmm. I'm not just gonna stay up here and watch this shit go down. So I'm going to try to help. And he goes and he sits with Eddie. He stays there mm-hmm. and watches his body mm-hmm. so that Davina's, her ass can't Minions. get a hold of him, you know? Because what she would she have done if she had got his body? She'd probably possess it and, you know, oh. in his body and be like, oh, look at me. I'm Davina. Oh, but God. Eddie and. Yeah. No, it was, I was glad Colin came down. I was glad Colin is breaking the rules. But you bring up a a fun part about um, the creator not getting involved. So there is that scene about halfway through the book where Nigel goes to the creator and he's Mm -hmm. like, hey, God, so Davina's breaking all the rules. We kind of broke some rules too, but, but look at her. And apparently the creator looks at him and says, there's been a fight amongst our, our boys down below before um, Eddie died. Adrian and Eddie and Jim all fought and Jim was like, oh, fine, I'll be alone. So you want to know my fun theory? Sure. I think dog is God. Mm, 
like peeking in and watching. Fight. <laughs> they had that fight in front of dog. Dog disappeared. And Jim's like, where did dog go? Fine. I'll be alone. And then literally like the next chapter, the next page is Nigel going, well, I just talked to the creator and the creator said they had this fight. And I'm like, it was dog. Dog was there. Dog you know what? It could be. Time. I didn't even think of that like literally because I just assumed like with most stories, God is omniscient, you know, <laughs> just knows. But maybe he was dog. I mean, this is a special dog. I kept yeah. thinking it was Davina, but it's not Davina because she would have pulled some shit with it. Um, but he just keeps appearing at like just the right times. And, you know, he showed up right when Jim died in back in book one. For the very first time, when he he saw the dog, he gave the dog his turkey sandwich. Then mm-hmm. he fell into the puddle and got electrocuted and died, and was yeah. you know recruited to the war. So like that was the first time he saw a dog. Dog disappeared after the fight. He'll sometimes disappear, but then reappear. And yeah. you know he reappeared later. I think when they were out at the quarry looking for Sissy's body, dog just like appeared. I don't know. Well, I'm like, either dog is God or, you know, the creator or whatever, mm-hmm. or he's his proxy or something. Yeah. Because if you're going to talk about breaking rules for him to be on the game board, so to speak, is completely breaking the rules. He's not ever actually doing anything, though. Yeah. Like, he just sits around and he eats the pizza crust or he lays at Jim's feet while Jim is researching. Like, he's not... Mm-hmm saying anything so yes like it is breaking the rules that he's on the board but he's not actually you know like being a fallen angel fellow warrior kind of thing Mm -hmm. so i I don't know Hmm. yeah it was they had a good theory dog disappeared (laughs) literally the next page nigel's going yeah i just went and talked to the creator and they had this fight and i was like who was there (laughs) who saw this fight dog dog was right there oh my gosh that's a really good theory because i oh my god i never even thought of it (laughs) i never even thought of it and uh i don't remember (laughs) i don't think this would ever be revealed because you know just edging into that he's jesus thing but never saying jesus and, you know yeah. just kind of edging into that it's god but always saying the creator like i don't yeah. know if she'll actually go into that because that might no be i think it's the religious well you know she's using the creator because like mm-hmm. even when you think of like the scribe virgin right and all that other stuff it's the creator over there too right it's not like god mm-hmm. so yeah, it's true but, I mean, when you say the creator, that's who we're talking about, right? I mean, I guess it could be anybody's God, technically. Anybody's yeah. highest level. Any religion's highest level, I guess. A creator? Yeah. I don't know. I think she's trying to make it less Christian, but also still very Christian. I'm, I'm really not sure what she's doing. But, yeah, that's my theory. Yeah. God is dog. Because it's definitely got the, you know, with the heaven and hell, right? It's Mm -hmm. got those themes going on, good and bad, heaven and hell, you know, Mm -hmm. rules of engagement. But it's like she's trying to take the edge off of it being like religion-y, if that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So, hmm. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) So we covered kind of those angels, the fallen angels. So what about like, what do you think about Nigel and Colin's relationship? So it almost feels homophobic to me that they Uh can't be openly together. Like, why are they hiding? They're hiding, but in plain sight. Everybody freaking knows. Everybody freaking knows. (laughs) Yeah. Colin doesn't even have his own house or his tent is like literally a blanket on the floor and like but they can't openly acknowledge that they're together and of course they have their whole falling out where you have to apologize to me I'm not gonna apologize to you bullshit bullshit but yeah I know that's what happens when you date the boss Nigel is the boss (laughs) of them 
and Colin's like, ass. yeah, yeah. And Colin is very young and passionate and wants to help and wants to be on the battleground and yeah. <sighs> and I mean, I for for some angels, right? I can't believe that Nigel is so jealous. Like he is mm-hmm. jealous of like thinking that. So like at the end there, you know, Colin's like taking a shower. He got some cute clothes out. He's like getting ready for something. And Nigel's like, where are you going? You know, he was like, <laughs> is he going to hang out with Adrian? And that's when that, con- you know, that like words, come, you know, that intent mm-hmm. comes up. Well, I've never known Adrian to be with men. You know, Mm -hmm. so maybe not, but I don't know, you know, Colin is good looking. Maybe Maybe he flipped him. I don't know. (laughs) Like, okay. um, Well, sure, Nigel. (laughs) Feeling the envy just like Davina. Yeah. So we haven't seen him do anything like really evil. You know, he's kind of breaking the rules, which is bad for him, but. The way we saw Davina do good in this book, we haven't seen Nigel do the opposite yet. No. And so I wonder if he's kind of on that same path as Davina, where where is he going? Like, is he going to go more righteous and stay pure? And I use mm-hmm. air quotes around that because that's his mindset. But where is he going to deviate from the path? Break the rules himself. Right. Yeah, you know what? The I can see like as far as the rules so far he's kind of been like a bystander like Colin's been doing mm-hmm. more than Nigel Nigel's kind of like knowing that things are happening and not engaging right he's like mm-hmm. letting it happen but maybe eventually Nigel will step in and do something that's a little bit gray I don't think he'll ever do anything outright bad but I do think mm-hmm. he would like undercut Davina in some kind of way that he wasn't supposed to. You know what I mean? Like eventually he's going to cave eventually. One, I hope all so. it takes is something bad enough or they're mm-hmm. two seconds from losing and he's desperate enough and he'll step in. Or if Colin like stabbed, maybe he'll, he'll step yeah. in then. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, no, I, I really like that the envy wasn't about our humans, but about right. the angels and the demons instead. Yes, which is very unique because at first when you just think, you just assume it's going to be about the soul, right? The soul mm-hmm. is envious. The soul that they are trying mm-hmm. to fight over is the one that's going to have the problem with envy. And it's not at all. no. And I, I really like that J.R. Ward is keeping it new and fresh with each book. Like it could become very mm-hmm. repetitive is the mm-hmm. only one that's come to mind. Like it could be, you know, book one every single time. He was very greedy. He just mm-hmm. wanted money. He just wanted stuff. He was greedy and that was the first sin. And, you know, it could easily become every single book is just the deadly sin is the human. Let's watch this play out. Let's see who can fight and who can win. And like I said, last time in book two, I was really appreciative of the fact that Davina won because that fucked with everybody's plans. Like, yeah, that changed the course that made it more personal for Jim to be like, Oh shit. You know, it's not going to be an easy ride for me. She's going to win some souls but I have to keep winning. So yeah, no, I, I really like J.R. Ward and how she's keeping it new and interesting and fresh. Yeah. I also want to say her voice is very, very unique. And I don't think anybody could read this book in like 50 years and understand it <laughs> because there's so much just hung in cheek. There's so much slang. There's so much that even though I was alive and an adult in 2011. I don't understand half the shit she's saying in here. Really? Well, maybe not half. There's like 10% where I'm like, wait, what was that? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I have to go look it up. Yeah, it's she's honest. definitely an acquired taste when it comes mm-hmm. to 
um because her voice is very strong like you said and it mm-hmm. sounds like like even when i i think i've mentioned this before in another conversation but when i started the black dagger brotherhood series i'm like what is this slang i'm like what is mm-hmm. it like <laughs> it's so harsh and almost yeah. arc and it's yeah but it's jr ward and it's her mm-hmm. voice and if i picked up a book with her name on it that didn't have this i'd be like this is not jr ward you're lying to me yeah but yeah no like the vernacular is changing so quickly that yeah if it, i mean 20, 30 years I honestly love how brutal she is, like, in her writing style. I mm-hmm. love how, like, you know, yes, Davina is, the you know, a demon, but she presents as a woman. But mm-hmm. I love how they she doesn't save anything. These other characters be calling her all kind of bitches. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I mean you know I think it's great I'm like damn it's amazing and it's like mm-hmm. she writes everything kind of hard like that it's like mm-hmm. hard writing but then when you get in these sex scenes it's like very erotic writing she goes mm-hmm. hard in everything like oh yeah she does yeah. not hold back no and yeah if you don't like serial killers definitely skip the scene where Vec goes and talks to his dad because that was rough yeah like it, it wasn't it was just him talking about being a serial killer and I was like getting sick to my stomach like oh god people listen to true crime podcasts and I, I follow, love it <laughs> they, they follow these people for fun like ew. I would never do that actually you know what no people who follow serial killers are not the same people that like true crime podcasts <laughs> People who follow okay. serial killers are sick in the head and they have obsessive natures about these people doing awful things. True crime listeners, to be fair, I think are more interested <laughs> in the whole story and the victims and if justice was reached. You know what I mean? Okay. They don't care. They're Well, at least every... Because you know I'm in a podcast group too. Yes. <laughs> and... <laughs> Whenever we read or not read, whenever we listen to a podcast series that has to do with serial killers, no one or a serial killer, no one is praising the serial killer. Nobody. Okay, good. Okay. Nobody. They're like, how did they get away with this? They're like, what the hell? You know, it's like you're trying to break down like what happened. Not. No, those are two different camps. Because. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in a, a small town in Florida called Tallahassee, and that's where Ted Bundy did some of oh. his work. Okay. So okay. when I was young, my dad took me around in a car, and he's like, this is where Ted Bundy crawled into a woman's window. And I was like, you are scarring me for life, sir. Please stop. I don't want to hear this. And so I, I stay away from all of that because I'm like, I've, I've driven by the house. I don't yeah. want to know more than this. Like. I wouldn't even want to I'm drive sorry. by the house. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm cool with a bunch of degrees of separation. So if I'm listening to a podcast, guess what? I've never met any of these people. I've never <laughs> seen any of these people's homes. I've never, I'm good with that huge amount of degrees of situa- uh, separation in between. Yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah, no, like it, it was a, a drive by and I was like, nope, nope, nope. And then people started talking about him on the internet. And I'm like, nope, 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 I'm nope, out. nope. I'm tapping Mm-mm. out uncle get me out of no. here yeah but, yeah but speaking of that did you ever suspect the detective fails as being one of those legion followers yeah no obsessed? i didn't i didn't that was kind of like huh you got me he always felt off and weird to me but i just assumed he was divina like, ah, see, I didn't think he was Davina, but I did think it was weird. Like at the one point where he like kind of unloads on Sophia, like, oh, yeah. just to let you know, I'm like, why are you telling her all this stuff? Like, yeah, no, that was super suspicious. He's like, yeah, yeah, I helped move, and I saw this box, and there was something in the box, and she like believes him over back, and yeah, no, but yeah. The whole time, even from the beginning, he was always just kind of like there and watching and kind of 
kind of obsessive about Vec. He's like, he's my best friend. I have to protect him. We're best buds. And I was like, is this Davina? This, yeah. this feels like Davina. So I'd, I never assumed the, the father figure part because I was like, no, it's just Davina. And I was like, oops, I missed the yeah. other bad guy. In this and book. he definitely had Davina's influence, though, because all of mm-hmm. these people... She is making deals with them. She is influencing Mm -hmm. them, giving them offers like with his Vex father. Hey, he took me up on it. Like he killed Vex mother because Davina prompted it. Like Davina Mm -hmm. prompted that kind of like the same setup she tried to do with Vex. Like I'm sure maybe the mother looked like someone else. Maybe it was like she was tricked kind of, kind of like Vex almost was. Or maybe it wasn't even that maybe it was just hey kill her and he's already so hopped up on murder yeah. if you and kill her be- you'll be famous you'll be yeah. this you'll get that yeah because i think she was like his 13th victim or something like he'd been yeah doing she was not early no. yeah so. yeah for sure but she did i mean okay so also when it got to that point where Vec was presented with his moment, right? Mm-hmm. This is your choice moment. I never felt there was any chance that he would kill that guy, quote unquote, because it wasn't a guy. It was actually Sophia looking like she put a glamour over her, basically. Mm-hmm. But the, in that moment, I felt zero fear that he was actually going to kill him. I had like a 10% thought. You know, um, that she might be like, hey, kill him. And he'll just pick up the gun and shoot him in the head. And then be like, all right, what's next? Uh, but, like, I, I had a brief moment of that. And it's like, no, that's not really his character arc. And this needs to be drawn out. So that's not yeah. going to happen. But yeah, no, he was way more good than evil throughout this whole book. Even though he was fighting the evil, so to speak, like, the good definitely outweighed the bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like he just didn't. If I had to critique his character, there wasn't enough darkness, I don't think, mm-hmm. to support the story she was trying to present with two halves, two shadows. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. he never came across to me as someone who could just go out and kill someone just because of whatever. So, I mean, he believed it in that opening scene. And in that opening scene, you know, as we already discussed, yeah, maybe I could see him grappling with the two halves. But I agree with you. Like, after that, it was more him being good and saying, oh, no, I am evil because I'm just like my father. Oh, Mm -hmm. no. You know? I I have this evil inside of me. I'm going to do something bad. But then he never did anything bad. Right. You know, he he didn't lie on the polygraph test. Even no, he, he didn't even plant to. anything. Like he didn't do anything bad. It's like he didn't plant any like evidence. He didn't lie mm. on anybody. Like he didn't do anything that was in the gray. So it's like, mm. and even in the beginning, he believed he might have done it. But he didn't really have a memory of doing it. So it's like. Yeah, he had no memory and there's no evidence. There's no actual like substantive evidence to support that he killed him. He just believed that he was capable of it. And, you know, he went there with the intent to kill the serial killer. But other than that, no, he never did anything bad. It was always just, oh, my father is evil. Oh, there feels like there's evil in the mirror staring back at me. Like there's there's evil around, but I'm not evil. I'm not part evil, but there's a lot of it around me. That's yeah. what it kind of felt like. That yes. felt like he could have been a little bit more gray as far as like, you know, being good or bad if he was fighting something internally, but he wasn't really, not really. Mm-mm. Not not the way that J.R. Ward was trying to make it with the two shadows and the soul mm-hmm. being split, yin and yang, good and bad. Like, no, he was 80% really good, 20% just doubting his goodness. 
Mm-hmm. It's almost like he should have had one shadow with like maybe a horn sticking out. I don't know. <laughs> like <laughs> the devil horn. Yeah, I mean like something <laughs> because he wasn't two different people. He was consistent as far as his character was concerned. He was. Even when he was mad at Sophia for just like giving him the kiss off, basically. Mm-hmm. He didn't act different. So she believed Bales without any physical evidence. Yeah. Bales just told her, you know, hey, I saw this a year ago. He did something illegal, you know. And she's like, oh my God. Yep, he's a serial killer. He's his dad. And I have to break up with him. I hate him. Like, we're done. I'm gonna go yeah. raid his house. I'm gonna tell everybody. Like, no. Uh-huh. She has to deal with a lot more good and bad and on the inside than him. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I think that was a weak, weak point. Um, mm-hmm. And, uh, oh, I did want to mention the narrator again, uh, Eric G. Dove. I think last time I told you I listened at 1.5, mm-hmm. I actually kicked it up a notch. I listened at 1.8. Wow. And after 10 minutes, it was normal. It's not normal. (laughs) He talks so slow in his normal cadence. It's unbearable. Is that Uh, why it's 14 hours long? Yes, because he talks so fucking slow. And (laughs) and I'm telling you, at 1.5 was good, but 1.8 was better. (laughs) It was even better. And I could still hear like all the details, all the inflections of his voice. Mm -hmm. Because I got to say, he, for a man with like, you know, he has some tenor in his voice, not necessarily Mm -hmm. bass, but he's got like that. He's got a good, strong male voice, but he doesn't have a deep voice. Right. Mm -hmm. So when he does Davina, it's like. Not falsetto exactly, but it's like <laughs> this other voice. And I just die, especially when Davina has like her little hissy fits and she pouts. Uh-huh. I just like want to roll over laughing. I'm like, <laughs> you're like, oh, you know, just the way he talks. It's so funny because it's not really falsetto, but it's definitely a couple uh-huh. octave high, octaves higher. It's hilarious. It's fucking hilarious. But I do like it. I like it. It's I just I don't know what about I just think that I've gotten I'll have used to, to his voice. To it at some point. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Okay, anyone that has not listened to this at all, if you try it on audio, start automatically with one point five. Okay. Automatically, he talks that slow, and then if oh, you God. can tolerate it, go up to one point eight. Because and when you after you listen to that for about 30 minutes and then you go back to one, you're going to be like, Oh my God. (laughs) Whoa. (laughs) Yes. 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 Cause natural people's natural cadence is never that Mm -hmm. slow. Never. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, why is he so slow? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he's a Southern man. (laughs) They're, they're pretty slow. I don't know, but he doesn't have any Southern twang in his voice, or if he has it, he's hiding it really well, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he's a good narrator, you know? Overall, this, with exception of the speed, you know, uh-huh. I'm in it. Like, I like everything. It's <laughs> like... It, when you hear like people calling Davida bitches on the audiobook, I'm like, bitch, that's how I know the tone. He's like, bitch, I will never. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I got the tone. <laughs> I'm like, but, dang. Oh, I love it. It's, it's hilarious that I just love that the characters are calling her all kind of bitches. I don't know. I just mm-hmm. love those parts. It's so it just sticks with me. <laughs> it's it's great. Yeah. Oh. Really uh, it's a fun time. So what else? Did we uh have to cover anything else or do you think we got the highlights? I think we got the highlights. This was a big this is a big book, but I think we got the highlights. I miss Butch. I thank God is God. Yeah. Um, I love that the envy was the angels and the demons, and I cried when Eddie died. Like, oh, it was it was so sad. No it crying was, for me, but I did feel bad for him. My oh, I I want him to come back. Yeah, yeah. Eddie. Oh, Adrian can actually sing. 
I know that's not like a really important detail, oh, but the yeah. books he was always, you know, had a shitty voice. Mm-hmm. And then after Eddie died, Jim heard singing and he's like, What the fuck is that? I don't have a radio. <laughs> when it was Adrian, he's like, I thought you couldn't sing. And Adrian's like, Yeah, no, I just did that to, I piss, just him off. to piss you off. Yeah. He was singing that song, Calling All Angels. You know that song? Mm-hmm. I can actually hear it in my head when they started talking about that song. I'm like, Oh, that song. Yeah, that's a good song. Like, oh, that's sad. He he definitely loved Eddie. He loved Eddie. <laughs> I'm they, like, uh, they were together for four centuries. I if know. You by that point, like that person is your other half, no matter who they are. It's a long time to be with someone. Um, mm-hmm. They're like their family, right? So but they had a weird dynamic to me still. They're family. They're like brothers. They're best friends. And, and kind of lovers. But not officially, right? Only to blow off steam. Yeah. Get drunk. Have a threesome. You know. Jerk someone off. You know. You do weird, you. weird, but Okay. I'll just roll with it because y'all were together for so long. It's complicated. It's complicated. (laughs) Now it's over, which is really sad. Yes. So let's rate the thing. Let's rate Envy, book three. Would you like to go first? Sure. I'm giving it four stars again. I really, I'm enjoying the series. I'm enjoying all of it. I love the pacing, even though it's a really thick book. J.R. Ward does a great job with the pacing and the characterization and everybody feels real and it never feels like it lags. And there's nothing that I would cut. There might be a couple spaces where I might expand a bit more, but and the love between Sophia and Vec felt very real. It felt very organic. I feel like they're going to stay together forever to the end, unless she decides to not trust him anymore. But no, it, it, they feel like they belong together. Yes. So, yeah. Solid four stars. Highly recommend. Yes. I love the series and I cannot wait for the rest of the series. Like I'm, I'm really excited to see where it goes. Yay. I am with you on the four stars. It's a solid, strong four stars. I am fully invested in this series i've got to see how it ends i want to see who wins the next round because at the very end it was revealed that we got a little you know surprise that you know jim will deal with someone he's dealt with before he gets a second Mm. chance spoiler spoiler (laughs) he gets a second (laughs) chance to go around with um matthias matthias oh yes (laughs) Yes. Yeah, I so forgot about that. <laughs> that was the round he lost, but something's gonna happen where he gets he has to deal with him again. So how's that gonna work? Who knows? Oh, it's gonna be so good. It's gonna be good. Can't start, can't start today. I'll start. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be good. So I am fully vested. I really love the angel characters. I really like Jim, as you know, Mm -hmm. the player of the game or, you know, the main linchpin in the game. I love his interactions with Davina. Oh, my God. I can feel the hate. I feel the hate. Yes. (laughs) Oh, my God. He would stab her 50 times in the face if he could. (laughs) He would. Just over and, and over and over again. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like I'm feeling all the emotions. And I feel like the the couples are getting better. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I'm down for it. So I also to recommend this series, especially um seeing little bite-sized pieces of the BDB world mm-hmm. here and there. If you're a fan of those, you know, Black Dagger Brotherhood books. You should hop on over here and get on this train because you're going to be like, it's going to be fun for you to see those little bits. I didn't read this series back when I was reading Black Dagger Brotherhood. But now that I'm reading this, I'm like, why? Why did I wait? And now I want to go back and read Dark Lover over, you know, the first five books and maybe skip around after that. But yes. And especially if you're caught up with the BDB series, because if you are current, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, if you are current (laughs) with that series, 
Davina shows her ass over there. She shows <laughs> up. The crossover is official, like official crossover. Her ass is over on that series. So if you are definitely caught up and you are curious about origins of Davina and Davina is a character, you should come back over here and read what she, what she did before. Mm-hmm. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just lay that there. <laughs> just lay it there. Yes. So yeah, I think that's it. I think we're done. What do you think, Casey? I think we're done. I think it's time for the after show. Yes. So we are going to end things there, guys. Again, if you'd like to check out the after show, it's available right now on Patreon. You'll have to head on over and sign up. And um, of course, join us for book club. If you'd like to talk about this book with us live or express your own feelings about this book, join us. We'd love to have you. And if book club isn't your thing, don't worry. We will be right here next month to talk about the next book. And you can just hear us talk about it because we love it. We love talking about it. We do. We, we really do. do. Yes. So the links for everything are on the show notes. And we will see you guys next time. Until then, take care. Bye, guys. Bye. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a positive five-star review or like this episode on your favorite podcast player. It seems so simple, but it really helps me out. You can share this podcast with other book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. You can also join the Shelf Addiction Patreon family. For as little as $2 a month, you will help us produce even more awesome content for your ears. You can also consider joining the Shelf Addiction official Facebook group where we talk all things bookish and more in a safe space. The Shelf Addiction Podcast is a part of the Nerdy Maven Network. You can also reach us via email at info at shelfaddiction.com. Thank you for listening.